Time Sheetal Arora, Assistant Professor Criminology at Sadaar Patel University of Police Security and Criminal Justice in Jodhpur. And I am going to present a module on International Cooperation in Police, International Criminal Police Organization, Interpol. Let's begin with the learning objectives of this module, that is one, to make learners understand the concept of Interpol, second, to make the learners understand the organizational setup of Interpol, third, to acquaint the learners with the functioning and documentation of Interpol. Interpol is the world's largest international police organization. It has 190 countries as its members. It functions to enable police at the global level to work together so as to make the world a safer place. Its high-tech infrastructure of technical and operational support helps to meet the growing challenge of fighting crime in the 21st century. It functions to ensure that police around the world have access to the tools and services necessary to do their jobs effectively. The Interpol helps in providing targeted training, expert investigative support and relevant data and secure communication channels. The combined framework helps police on the ground understand crime trends, analyze information, conduct operations and ultimately arrest as many criminals as possible. It also aims to facilitate international police cooperation even where diplomatic relations do not exist between particular countries. Action is taken within the limits of existing laws in different countries and in the spirit of Universal Declaration of Human Rights, their constitution prohibits any intervention or activities of a political, military, religious or racial character. Now regarding why there is a need for international police cooperation. First, due to ever-increasing threat of transnational crime. The tendency of criminals to cross the national border and indulge in transnational crime is not an unknown phenomenon. Borders were established to outline the jurisdiction claimed by each state and transgressing the national borders has often provided criminals with a way to mitigate or avoid the consequences of illegal acts committed within particular territory. Efforts are made by the respective states to control the transnational crime, yet there is strong evidence that transnational crime has growing in present times in abated manner. Second, due to the shrinking world, many changes have occurred in society since the generation of our parents and grandparents. These changes have somewhat facilitated more transnational crime. Consider, for example, the following five developments all within the last few years. There has been an expansion of the transportation system with dramatic improvements, particularly airline and automobile travel has made traveling simpler and faster. This has led to increased international tourism and business travel. There has been expansion of the communication as well. This has taken place most notably in the areas of satellite and fiber optic telephone and television transmission fax transmission and computer information storage, processing and transmission. The disintegration of the Soviet Union has had far reaching implication for the international trade. It has specifically reduced or eliminated trade and travel restrictions between East and West. Further, it has reduced the level of social control within and between many of the former Soviet bloc countries. It has also made many countries cold war fears and policies outdated. Expansion of world trade is a very prominent feature of today's economy. There has been stronger participation of East European economics and the economies of Asia, the Middle East and the third world countries. The world's economic independence has now became a basic fact of life. Perhaps most significant of all, the world's population has increased resulting in the more crowding more areas of poverty, disease and hunger in large movements of people across national borders. As a result of prevalence of such conditions, there are more opportunities and possibly reasons for committing crime. Movement of people and information across national borders has become easy thus laying down a perfect setup for increased transnational crime. 
It is no wonder that our newspapers now regularly report incidences of international terrorism, theft, smuggling, securities and currency violations, computer crimes, fleeing from justice, drug trafficking and illegal immigration just to name a few. Now regarding the police mission, a distinguishing feature of modern civilization is the use of government institutions such as police, courts and correctional agencies to resolve the conflict between people and enforce basic social rules. Such justice provided by the state is regarded to be far more superior than the earlier form of justice that features the use of brutal and unrestrained physical force to resolve the conflict between individuals, families or tribes. The most important objective of state justice is to control violence and total destruction in society and to provide protection to the weaker sections from victimization. If the government today aim to render protection to people against crime through their police agencies and want to effectively enforce social rules, they must deal with transnational crime very strongly. Another important objective of state justice is to serve to protect the society's dominant values and customs that are not harmful for the society. Each society has its own enforcement style and priorities and even some of its own law factors and those often complicate matters of international police cooperation. Now regarding overcoming the limits of jurisdiction. Transnational crime involved two or more countries with each claiming sovereignty and exclusive criminal jurisdiction within its territory. When a criminal crosses the border of his own country and enters some other country, the pursuing police officers lose their legal control. In order to resolve the issue, different governments and their police agencies use different strategies. Some involve direct, unilateral, extra-legal police action within another country or official involvement to evade the law. Others measures involve cooperative bilateral legally sanctioned action by one country's police or by a multinational police task force on behalf of the other country. The first of these two kinds of strategies is predicted on violating international law and other countries' sovereignty, while the second one is based on legality and cooperation. Regarding guiding principles for improvement, given the trends of policing transnational crime, two principles immediately seem to be applicable towards better future attempts. First, any country's international police should have working relationship based on properly negotiated agreements, such as mutual respect, benefits and consents. Political or economic coercion violation of foreign sovereignty or extra-legal collusion should be avoided as far as possible. Second attempt is aimed towards achievement of greater consistency, effectiveness, predictability and legitimacy in the relationship. These principles are admittedly idealistic and difficult to achieve but it's quite fruitful and worthwhile to keep them in mind. Regarding specific needs for cooperation, from practical perspective, certain international cooperation is regularly needed to deal with transnational crime. It is required that various countries work at discovering, documenting and communication basic working information about crimes. For example, what happened, when, where, description of suspect and injuries, etc. There is a need for direct acts of investigative assistance. It would involve locating and arresting, suspecting, collecting evidence, identifying and interviewing witness and detaining and extradicting suspects. Finally, there is a need for help in prosecution as in case of deposing witness or arranging for their appearance in court, having investigative personal testify in court and if a conviction occurs, providing the sentencing judge with background information about the suspect so as to determine an appropriate punishment. Other forms of transnational police cooperation which may be less recognized but are important none the less include sharing of law enforcement, expertise, technology and resources, sharing of cultural information and philosophy and indulgence in some of duty social and recreational activity. 
These latter forms of cooperation offer potential benefits far beyond facilitating law enforcement's capacity to control crime. Special conditions supporting expanded cooperation. It's important to note that most of the contemporary world conditions that facilitate increased transnational crime also help in achieving greater international cooperation between police forces. Some more conditions for achieving the police cooperation may be considered as under. Use of media sources such as television, movies and news. The commitment of many countries to the teaching of second and third languages in schools and the development of heightened world consciousness among the masses in a pan-globe manner. Now let us briefly consider each of these. Television, movies and the news media, the art of movie production has advanced and spread throughout the world as have the technology and program production skills of the television industry. In many parts of the world, more households own TV sets than telephones. Likewise, professional news organizations that use newspaper, magazine, radio and or television media have increased in size, budgets and journalistic skills. Dedicated news networks with large skilled international staff and international focus have taken the world news coverage to all the new nooks and corners of the world. Even small news companies can have easy access to international news and give wide coverage by subscribing to an established service such as United Press International Limited International News Coverage is available on now on internet for a modest subscription fee. Because of these advancement, people are better informed about important daily events such as natural disaster, political and economic development and major crimes. They are also exposed to foreign movies and television programs, both documentary and fictional. All this helped them in developing common knowledge, experience and meanings now regarding commitment to foreign language proficiency. Fundamental condition for people anywhere to live and work together is efficient communication. This requires mastering a common spoken and written language. In most of the countries, there has been deliberate attempts of teaching second and third languages, particularly foreign languages regarded to be international language such as French and English. These languages are taught from an early age in school and children tend to grasp them very well. Some expertise or basic knowledge of foreign language helps in enhancing trade and tourism, hence many countries tend to promote them. Such attempts make communication possible across the borders and enhance international cooperation. Now regarding heightened world consciousness. Prevalence of such conditions led to the development of a heightened world consciousness. This means that more people are becoming mindful on a daily basis of what is going on in other countries and to feel personally concerned for the outcome of international events. This is not to say that we have suddenly overcome all of our traditionally disruptive conflict generating human feelings and attitudes such as fear, hurt, jealousy, greed, cultural chauvinism and the desire to boss other around. This doesn't make the police officers and soldiers unnecessary. They will be definitely needed well into the future. However, it does appear that we are in the world together and in spite of all the disruptive forces at work in our lives, we can all live better if we cooperate at least where transnational crime concern. Though existence or absence of such an emerging attitude cannot be empirically proved at this point. However, its development makes sense in light of the world conditions discussed above. Apart from this and the apparent worldwide political popularity of fighting international crime provides supporting evidence. Now regarding syncretism. The principle of syncretism that is the threat of a common enemy and the focus of a shared goal helps in unification of people. Transnational crime appears to be assuming a common threat to all countries. There are of course other common enemies currently out there threatening and potentially unifying. 
our world. AIDS, other communicable diseases, epidemics, environmental pollution, poverty and world hunger are familiar examples. These problems may compete to some degree with transnational crime for politicians' attention and limited world resources, but their main effect so far has been to facilitate greater world unity. Now regarding obstacles to greater international police corporations. How cooperative relationships develop? International cooperative police relationships, when they have been successful, evolve according to a three-step process that Professor Ethan Nidelman has termed harmonization. Regularization of relations, accommodation of different systems to each other and harmonizations toward common norm. Stated more simply, this process features a trial and error getting to know you period, a period of making compromises and adjustment and a period in which new hybrid policies and procedures become institutionalized. From the perspective of cooperative international police relationship, there are essentially four conditions which must be present. A perception shared by all the participant parties of serious threatening crime problem. The involvement of experienced legal professionals who help in understanding the problem and propose practical solutions. The involvement of political officials who formulate, enact and defend enabling laws and budgetary support. Regular communication between law enforcement professionals and political officials throughout the whole process. Whenever any of these conditions has been wanting or flawed, a consistent international police cooperation has not occurred. Now let's discuss about obstacles. From the above model, one can imagine possible obstacles to be presence of each essential condition. The first condition, a shared perception of a serious crime threat has resulted in fewest obstacle in today's world. However, the second condition often presents frustrating situation. Most of the world agencies in question contain many talented, experienced, consensuous practitioners who are functional and have invaluable practical knowledge. Unfortunately, public agencies often suppress such people from speaking out. Such political executives often feel threatened, embarrassed to rely on the expertise of subordinates. If we are to achieve affirmative results, we must find ways to draw upon practical work expertise at all levels in the agencies. All such relationship requires legal authority to operate enabling legislation or at least official permission and the expenditure of money, personal hours and other agency resources. These requirements of country are the province of politicians. Politicians also play a critical role in organizing public support and taking any political heat. The three primary obstacles that one would find in obtaining the required political support in most cases are overcoming short-term or long-term enmity between country, convincing politicians and their constituencies that change is required from the familiar situations. Even though it may present certain inconvenience and anxiety and convincing politicians and their constituencies that building an effective international police relationship is important enough keeping in mind the time factor, the resources issues to get the prompt attention. Fourth serious obstacle to attaining political support is the lack of diplomatic or tactful work conditions due to which it is difficult to iron out the fundamental differences in the law enforcement can be ironed out. Different countries based on their respective histories and customs have markedly different ideas about what constitutes property administered state justice reconciling these different styles into a working cooperative relationship requires strong commitment compromise and the skillful selling of the final product of each political constituency most politicians perhaps more commonly in the u.s than in other countries do not have direct diplomatic experience are not comfortable in a diplomatic role and are focused primarily on pleasing a local constituency. They are reluctant to get involved beyond giving vague lip service to projects that would take them 
into unfamiliar territory and perhaps offend many voters. The fourth condition is likely to see all pitfalls that affect international communication which may be generally different time zones, different languages, unfamiliar or undependable equipment and so on and so forth. All these obstacles can usually be overcome through determination, discipline and patience. More specific to the needs of law enforcement and political communication, however, is the problem of knowing whom to call in other countries, the appropriate governmental contacts and the appropriate protocol for communicating with them. Now regarding future prospects. Current trends, what is going on? Let's discuss the following trends in the realm of international policing. An increase in the number of mutual legal assistance treaties between countries, an increase in the number of law enforcement personal stations abroad, increasing involvement of military personnel in police matters, increasing involvement of UN security forces in a police role, increasing support for and use of Interpol as law enforcement resources expansion of unofficial fraternal police exchanges and increasing development of international working relationship within established specialized areas of policing. These trends will probably continue at least into the immediate future. A full discussion of each is beyond this presentation, but a few comments about each should be made here. MLATs that may relate any of the forms of police cooperation mentioned in specific needs above are in positive step as they advance the guiding principles of bilateralism. Their primary drawback as a tool of international police cooperation are that they take time in the process of negotiation and may be wanting when needed for urgent cases. Apart from the each treaty reflects a unique agreement between countries thus requiring different criminal procedures for dealing with different countries. Perhaps, according to Ethan Nidelman's harmonization theory, we will eventually be able to achieve universal acceptance of model international treaties related. For example, to exchanging information about crimes, arrest and extradition and searches and seizure of evidence Interpol's annual journal assembly meetings would provide an excellent forum for developing such models. Now regarding stationing law enforcement personals in other countries. Stationing law enforcement personals in other countries ostensibly to protect our own citizen is acceptable as long as it is done openly and with the permission of the country in question. However, there is always the temptation, if not the initial intention of taking direct unauthorized law enforcement actions in other countries. Important to know that expanding Interpol role in combating transnational crime is highly desirable in that it is well established of a valuable law enforcement experience and resources and furtherance are guiding principles. The primary limits on Interpol's usefulness are the complexity of its procedures and their remoteness to patrol officers. Regarding fraternal police exchanges, along with the growth of world travel and tourism generally, more and more police officers are now taking vacations in other countries meeting their foreign colleagues, socializing with them and corresponding with them by letter, phone, fax or email. The International Police Association Worldwide Police Fraternal Organizations report increasing level of membership and travel hosting applications and conversations with police officers in the US and abroad have been positive trends. Such fraternal police exchanges offer immeasurable benefits, building on a natural occupational connection between police officers everywhere. They enable officers and their families to meet foreign officers and their families personally, to eat and party with them and to share recreational and sightseeing activities. In addition to being entertaining, they foster more open communication, a deeper understanding of different cultures and customs and a greater willingness to work together and help each other out 
a definite boost for the harmonization process regarding focusing on recruit training of the many police specialty areas in which international working relationship are developing recruit training offers the best vehicle for promoting greater international police cooperation this is so for at least three reason it covers every area in which new officers require training it employs important teaching educational goals and advanced methods and it is the specialty area that can be shared most conveniently knowing what a given police agency teaches it recruits to do provides us with an excellent breakthrough of getting to know them it is even better if we can find out the why behind the what and most training programs provide this too the use of teaching educational goals and methods mean that there is commitment to transmit knowledge and learning and that the instructors have skills and equipment to accomplish this hence there is both motivation and ability to transmit what is taught to outside students as well as to the recruits training programs are usually well documented at least in terms of printed curricula course outlines and lesson plans they are also usually conducted under circumstances that would not endanger or have observed interference with police operations hence if there is a willingness to share what is taught with outsiders it is relatively convenient to do so let us now conclude this presentation by following points to sum up everything that has been discussed so far it can be said transnational crime has become more prevalent and serious today than ever before at least in the public perception and has become a processing international political issue meanwhile there are many conditions in this today's world that make the development of international police cooperation more possible and convenient than ever before in capitalizing on this opportunity we should follow two guiding principles based essentially on the values of bilateralism legality effectiveness and consistency so that our newly expanded cooperative police relationship mark progress rather than regression the process by which successful police cooperative relationship develop that is harmonization requires that four enabling conditions be met and there are serious obstacles to be overcome in achieving these conditions lastly in international policing the development of working relationship in specialty areas be a special promise for improving international police cooperation in the future thank you